Hello, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, families, cats, dogs, chickens, ducks, and all in between. Today we're going to be talking about the SK Hynix P Gold P31 NVMe drive. This will be used for potentially for an unraid cache. We're going to test it out and see how well it performs. And as you may remember from a previous video, I had just literally said that I was going to look at used enterprise solutions for SSDs or NVMe drives or AC. PCHI or whatever add-in cards that go into your PCI 3.0 slot uh, with flash storage. So I just said I was going to look at those solutions, but when I was actually, you know, got down to it and looking at what I was willing to spend, it was all basically between the 200 and three or 200 to 400 dollar range, and I ended up just being like checking out what the brand new stuff had, and turns out I found this. And this is about 120 to 130 dollars so it's not terribly expensive or terribly cheap um, in my opinion however the one downside of this as opposed to like a used enterprise uh, drive is that this is uh, tlc so you know tlc has improved a lot over the years since NAND flash has become a thing um, despite how you may feel about it, I would feel comfortable putting this in my home server, even though I don't, I mean, I do do a lot of writes, <laughs> do do, I do a lot of writes and reads, actually more writes to my uh, NVMe or SSD cache, whatever it is, my cache on my Unwrite server, because I'm constantly backing up every video I make um, for YouTube, as well as, I don't know, downloading ISOs or whatever it may be. Like, I'm always writing the cache drive. There's lots and lots of stuff getting written there. And TLC is known to not be as reliable in the long run, but considering that it's come a long way, I think it'll be okay for home use. Now, I could have gone with the MLC used uh, drives that you'll find all over eBay, and I, you know, those have probably got petabytes and petabytes of, you know, writable storage that I'll never conceivably touch in probably, you know, seven to nine years. Um, but I don't know. I just. I bit the bullet. I want to try this out. So let's try it out. So let's go ahead and get the server um, knocked up here. We'll be using an, a PCI to NVMe M.2 adapter, M.2 to NVMe adapter. And then of course the classic, uh, what is this, X540? Yeah, X540 T2 10 gig uh, NIC. And I guess this is gonna be my test server because I feel like I'm always grabbing it off the server rack. Every time I'm gonna do a test, I really need like an open, open bench yeah an open bench test but whatever let's go ahead and get all this stuff hooked up so as per usual we will be um, using the Dell 630 for this and installing both of the drives uh, so we're gonna put this adapter here like so I should have said instead of drives it's just an adding card I don't know why I said drives all right and then our 10 gig NIC. Now we've already proven in the past that there is definitely plenty of bandwidth um, available to both of these at the same time because we are in the past been getting really close to hitting one gigabit per second. We just haven't found the right drive just yet to uh, allow us to do that consistently. Wow, I don't know why that was so difficult. All right, so let's get to testing. All right, service hooked up. And first up on the list are the benchmarks. So I'm not gonna read these off to you guys. You can see here that obviously this drive is gonna perform pretty well. We used Crystal Disk for this and I was gonna do others, but I think there's plenty of data online to really show you that, you know, this thing is, is pretty awesome. And I think if you're already shopping for an SSD, you've probably already come across this one on your own. Uh, and that's why we're not gonna really go through the benchmarks. Now, for real world testing, one thing we are gonna do is actually talk about the process. So, I took a 42 gigabyte movie file, the one that I've used for, shoot, a couple of years now, I think, and transferred that over to 10 gig network speeds, and we saw approximate peaks of 900 megabytes per second. I uh, never, I don't think I ever saw anything above 900, but you know, even so it still was very consistent. And for the next test, we took a 94 gigabyte zip file and also tested that across the 10 gig network. And we saw similar speeds of 900 megabytes per second. But what's important to note here with both tests is that at neither point did you, we see a significant drop after a few seconds or even close to a minute of riding. So that's pretty important 
that that's a thing because with a lot of NVMe drives, you'll see a nice spike of like really fast transfer speeds and then it'll just dip um, after the DRAM cache runs out. So it's nice to see that this thing does seem to have some endurance. Now, one thing I did differently today or with this test than the previous Micron test is that I've seen a lot of um, chatter online about when drives are full, they don't run as well. So I went ahead and filled this drive up. It had about 107 gigabytes of free space. It's a one terabyte NVMe. So having 107 to me seems pretty full. And then I went ahead and transferred over that 94 gigabyte zip file again. And to my surprise, we did see a little bit of slowness, but not really enough to complain about. I don't remember seeing uh, peaks of 900 megabytes per second like I did previously, but we still were with between 600 and the high 800 uh, megabyte per seconds uh, range at any given point, usually higher than lower. So this drive, I think, you know, I think it did pretty well. It is definitely a great candidate for a, I actually have two, that's how good they are. Um, it's a great candidate for Unraid cache. I think I will move forward using this in an Unraid build uh, in the future, but I definitely, I don't know where my other box is, but I definitely want to um, do a RAID 1 instead of a like RAID 0, I think, because if we can get really close to one gigabit per second, you know, that being at 900, I think we'll be fine in a RAID 1. So I think I'm going to do two of those in the future. Um, not sure when. And we'll stick with the SK Hynix for now and see where that leads us. So if you guys have any questions about these drives, you know, drop a comment below and I'd be more than happy to try and answer those. And until then, I will see you guys all on the very next video. Peace.